Hello everyone, what is going on? I'm Gaff from Mastermind 74 back again today and welcome to kind of a new series that I'm going to be starting. I just had the idea relatively recently at the time of recording this video on May 7th uh, of 2024 of course and um, it's going to be called something like Source Shorts. Yeah, try saying that three times fast. I'm not going to. Um, but this is going to be sort of short and sweet source related videos that covers coding and perhaps some other aspects of source modding. Now this this first video I do have to give a thank you to uh, our mod official and real user Zero. You'll probably see their comments on screen right now. Uh, I am doing live style recording for this by the way as well just so you you know up front that's what's going on and let me know if you like the pre-recorded stuff better or the live style recording stuff. I make fuck ups all the time anyway so you know you'll probably get be used to it at this point but uh, anyway they wanted to know if it's possible to add friendly fire as seen in Half-Life 2 beta or Half-Life 1 into a Source 2013 mod and I've come up with some form of a solution it might not be perfect but it does kind of do the job that, that you would want um, so well let's just get into it so I'm in a Source 2013 single player games.sln game solution and we're going to go to NPC Citizen 17.h first and it's all important to note that with this friendly fire stuff uh, you, it's the situation that allows the AI to go hostile against you. So I think that adding something in on Take Damage Alive, like if you accidentally shoot a citizen, you probably don't want them all to go hostile against you, but if you accidentally or intentionally kill a civilian, then you would want the AI citizens to go hostile against you. So for that reasoning, I'm going to be adding a void function called event killed inside of NPC citizen 17.h. And as you'll see here, we are going to be creating a void function called event killed event underscore killed I should say and we have to pass through inputs of a const c, c take damage info called and info and we're going to elaborate this inside of npc citizen 17.cpp in just a moment but there's a couple of other things that I'm going to be changing up first before we get there so one of the first things that I'm going to be showcasing is a change to make it so you can actually hurt player companions and let player companions hurt you. And so you want to go to npcplayercompanion.cpp, go to the spawn function, and you'll see this capabilities add line of bits cap no hit player, which basically says don't hit players, uh, no hit squad mates, and also friendly damage immune. So don't take damage from NPCs that are D underscore LI. That, that's basically a like relationship. So what you can do is comment this out. So essentially they can hit the player, you can hit the player, and that's kind of what you would want to have happen. And also inside of AI player ally .cpp, uh, I need to find the mourner. I uh, see, so you got TLK ally killed here. So that is what would happen if you have a squad of citizens, one of them ends up getting killed in front of their eyes and they'll say something like, oh God, or no, or whatever. Um, now this would end up being triggered if the player kills a citizen in front of another citizen. Now you'd want to have a special line of dialogue for when a citizen gets betrayed. So we actually are going to add an if statement above this line. So we'll say if info dot get attacker and then do an arrow and is player. Now I do believe we want this to be false as well. So you add an exclamation mark at the front, tab that out. So essentially what it's saying is if we have a mourner, from this dynamic cast, which finds a speech target. And then if we, if the citizen isn't killed by the player, then we want to play this special line of dialogue. And it's gonna be a random line of dialogue as well, if you look into it a bit further. 
And so let's actually go to NPC Citizen 17.cpp now. Now, one of the things that I would say is something that you would. I oh, look at that models chef hat that MDL. That is a uh, pretty funny. Anyway, one of the things that I would say is kind of important is you wouldn't want to have your AI squad still be with you when you betray them. So it'd be kind of helpful to find the squad members that are in the player squad and effectively remove them from the player squad so they all do their own thing and go hostile against the player. So the best way that I found to achieve something like this is to not do what I'm doing right now because I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. It is to create a CUTL vector, which is a C++ way of creating a dynamic array. And I'll cover this in a follow-up Valve source code tutorial, but um, you do it like this. So you have a CUTL vector and then inside of less than and greater than signs the type. So in this case, it's a CNPC citizen asterisk. And then you give it a name. So I'm just going to be calling it squad members as such. And then you want to go to add to player squad, wherever that function is defined right here. And at the end of that, you want to do uh, squad members dot add to tail of this. And then in remove from player squad, at the very end, you want squad members dot find and remove this as seen here. And now we need to go to, oh, I actually need to define the event killed function. So I'm just going to add this after on take damage live. So I'll add a void cnpc underscore citizen colon colon event underscore killed passing through an input of a const c take damage info called and info. Oh, and I apologize if you hear the um keyboard as well uh hopefully you don't but if you do there's nothing i could do dude anyway so with that being said and done uh, as long as this is added after that cutl vector you'll see in the video exactly what i did so this is what i mean about it being a lifestyle recording um because we're going to be using squad members if you define squad members in the middle of the code like down here there's a possibility that it's going to say it's unrecognized so by adding it right at the top like i did then it should be perfectly fine. Now, I'm probably just going to copy and paste this because, you know, I'm being lazy and I can't really, well, I don't, I, this is supposed to be short and sweet and, you know, I'm just going to talk over it. So basically, inside of the event killed function, we're going to say if info.getAttacker and then bracket arrow is player. So if the reason why the citizen was killed was because of the player, then what we're going to do is set a default relationship of classify is just going to return class citizen rebel it can also pass through class citizen um passive as well so if we just go to the classify function then we'll see that um yeah it's class citizen passive which is before gordon goes rogue and then you'd also get um where is it you you'll get rebel as well so here um so yeah, if Gordon's pre-criminal or citizens are passive, then they're passive. Otherwise, it's a player ally. So that's um that that's what classify is going to be doing in this situation. In the context of having you know citizens on your side and having guns and all that, it will be class player ally. So it'll take any and all class player allies and turn them against the player by setting the relationship to be a hateful relationship which is what the underscore ht is doing and then 99 is the priority and that basically means do it immediately then we'll do a cai player ally asterisk p mourner dynamic cast so the same thing that you saw inside of the ai player ally it's just this section right here it's doing the exact same thing except this time if we do have p mourner then we'll say p mourner arrow speak if allowed of tlk betrayed that's the betrayal dialogue. So the citizen will say something like, we trusted you or, um, you know, we believed in you or something, whatever the lines of dialogue are. They'll end up saying one of those. And then 
We'll also do a CAI squad asterisk P player squad, which equals G underscore AI squad manager dot find squad of make string of player squad name. And then if P player squad, then we're going, just going to create a for loop, iterate over squad members dot count, and then CNP citizen asterisk P citizen equals squad members dot element of I, and then P player squad and we move from squad of P citizen. And then outside of everything, return base class colon colon event killed of info. So this is just saying find the player squad, and if it's valid, iterate over our squad members dynamic array CUTL vector, find every citizen in that array, and then remove them from our player squad. So if we build the solution, then what we should find is that uh, if we can hurt civilians, and then they'll team colour basically. So um, if you just give me a minute, I'll have to make sure everything's all A-OK, -okay, and then uh, I'll show you this in action. So just give me a second. All right, so this is where we'll find out that um, it, this doesn't actually work. But uh, I'm using a couple of maps from the, you know, the Street Wars chapter of Half-Life 2, D3C setting scene 05. And hopefully the audio balance is okay, but I'll be experimenting with having two different audio tracks. So the audio balance is going to be all right. But as you'll see, we've got um, friendly AI. We'll go over here. And um, yeah. Yeah, so just have the squad follow us. We'll go into the building because if you team kill the AI like down here, they might not actually like respond to you. So if we have them in here, for example. Oh, yeah. So we'll have all the citizens here and then we can look at a civilian and be like, you know what? I don't like the way you look. Fuck you. And then basically, yeah, everyone's just team killed us. Um, but if we, you know, respawn, they're friendly again. That's perfectly fine. And if you don't believe me with the dialogue, because you may not have heard it amongst everything, what I can do is put on subtitles. No, but I didn't mean to cancel that. Fucking god damn it, dude. Um, here we go. Hey, it's Freeman. You're not leaving without me. Oh, it didn't work. What happened? Oh yeah, this can happen as well. There's like um like an assertion error or something. Uh yeah, I don't know why that happens. So that this is what I mean about this not being perfect. You can end up getting game crashes when you try and kill the uh the friendly AI. So I'm not hundred percent sure why that happens. Uh, it's probably something to do with that CUTL vector and trying to remove the uh, the player. Oh, sorry, trying to remove the citizens from the player's squad. Excuse me, I don't know what I'm saying. But um, it's probably trying to find null entries and it kind of fucks up. So it's, uh, it's not, like, not like it saves the citizens that are in the array. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, see, you're not the man I thought you were, but then you see there that... um. They're still members of the squad. So this can actually have an adverse effect if you were to, for example, um, go right to the end of the level, which is down here. And then if you had AI squad like down here and they turn on you, you can go through the level transition and then they'll suddenly be friendly towards you. I'm not going to showcase it here, but it does happen. They'll basically immediately go from being hostile to you to being friendly with you. So... Again, I'm not 100% sure how you would resolve that issue if that is something that you would want to resolve. And as you saw there, there was that random crash that just happened. So it's obviously not a perfect implementation, um, but that's my way of getting it done anyway. So if anyone else has a better method, then you can let me know in the comment section down below how to potentially make this better. But this is meant to be a short video and I've gone for like nearly 15 minutes already. So I apologize for that. Um, but that's basically how you would do this. So let me know what you think about this. And I may, I may continue it. I could also branch off and cover multiplayer stuff or any other aspects of source modding, like uh, resource stuff and CFG stuff and crap like that, you know. Stuff that the Valve source code tutorial series is not really going to be covering because that's more about this kind of programming stuff. But anyway... Um, Yep, yeah, just let me know what you think. Hopefully you find this helpful. And if you have any criticisms, improvements, suggestions and or 
ways to make this friendly fire stuff work better, then let me know. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for today. So thank you so much for checking this video out. Hope you found it somewhat helpful and informative. And I'll see you next time for whatever I decide to do next. So take care out there, everyone. Peace out and see you later.